we are able to um, share it on our YouTube channel later. Um, I am um, Jasmine Alderson. I'm the spa director here at Lotsa Medical Spa. This is our first day of our virtual open house, so we will be having events every day. Um, we'll also have weekly specials, so if you haven't, um, you know, if you haven't gone to our website or gone to our Facebook page yet to see those events, I encourage you to do so and sign up for all of them. We have a lot of information to share and a lot of prizes to give away today. Um, we will, at the end of this, um, give away a free microneedling treatment to one lucky winner. Um, joining us today is Brian Patton. He is the Eastern Sales Director for SkinPen. So he covers about half the country um, with SkinPen. He'll get into it a little bit more, but SkinPen is the only FDA-approved microneedling device, um, and he's going to tell us um, why it's so great and why you should come to Lux for this treatment. Brian, it is all yours. All right, oh, thank before you start, I'm sorry. Um, Go ahead. <laughs> we also have a couple of our estheticians joining us today. Uh, Jessica Sanders and Rebecca Mullen are here. So if there's any um, questions that Brian's not able to address because he has to stay strictly on label um, with the device, Rebecca and or Jessica will be able to answer those for us. So please ask as many questions as you have, and you can do that by just sending me a message um, directly in the chat feature. All right, now, Brian, it's your turn. All right, thanks, Jasmine. Uh, appreciate you all having me and uh, welcome all the patients that are able to view this. I'm going to start out with a quick video. I think it's a nice little overview, um, and I think it'll slow down my computer if I don't do it first. So um, there's a good reason to do it first. So let me just work through this. I'm going to share part of my screen. Um, let me see. Hopefully, it's going to be playing here in a second for y'all. And one thing you may want to just um, realize is you got to have your audio on to hear this video. So um, you may be on mute, but I'm going to press play again. I just wanted to give everybody a second to be able to turn their audio up. One well, of my friends did it. She looked fabulous. Started researching it, and the first two words popped FDA clearance. You definitely want FDA clearance. So safety was absolutely number one. The FDA clearance that the skin pen microneedling device has is really important. I would not use something on that many family members, especially not my mother, that I didn't feel was very safe. The downtime was very little, and the results were great. At skin pen, and a few days later, I was working out. I'm one of the girls in the class said, Why does your skin look so good? And for a second, I was like, Oh, I don't know. I just, you know, my lucky day. And I went, oh, No, skin pen. I had skin pen. I am an advocate of skin pen um, because I'm also a patient of skin pen and have the procedure myself. So I love using skin pen. My patients are enjoying the results that they're getting. It's quick. It's easy. It's legit. It is 100% worth it. Hi, I'm beauty expert Cheryl Kramer Kay, and I am so excited to tell you about the skincare treatment I just tried called Skin Pen. I had been wanting to try microneedling, which is a treatment for acne scars and anti aging. Bellis has conducted more than 90 validation tests on their skin pen, and it is the first microneedling system cleared by the FDA. That means it is a safe and effective treatment for facial acne scars for patients ages 22 and up. I also learned that the skin pen is the only microneedling device made in the U.S., but it's available in more than 35 countries and has been safely used on more than 10,000 customers. That's what I needed to hear to finally try microneedling, and I'm so glad I did. So most treatments take 30 minutes and there's little to no downtime. I just looked a little flush after the appointment, but I was able to go right back to work and by the next day I looked totally back to normal with a gorgeous glow to my skin that hasn't gone away. So before you schedule your own appointment, you need to confirm that your provider is a licensed medical professional or supervised by a board certified plastic surgeon or dermatologist. 
You also want to confirm that the microneedling device is FDA cleared or approved. That's important because not all devices have the same clearance for safety and efficacy as skin. What I love about the skin pen is that Bellis Medical has put a ton of thought into patient safety. So every treatment is sterile and completely safe. For example, skin pen has a proprietary cartridge that has a single use lockout feature. So there's no way the same cartridge can be used more than once and there's no risk for cross contamination. That along with other safety features made me feel assured that I was being treated with the best and safest device on the market. All right, great. Hopefully you all have me back at this point. Um, I'm going to go into a little bit of a PowerPoint that'll be really as interactive as you all want to make it. I really want to make sure that everybody's asking questions. So um, I guess we're going to be monitoring the chat section, but by all means, if you have the ability to unmute yourself and ask a question, you can stop me at any time. Um, the PowerPoint is only meant to serve, I could give it without the PowerPoint, it's only meant to serve um, y'all as having pictures to go with what I'm, I'm talking about. So hopefully that'll be helpful. Does anybody have any questions before we get started? I will get right into it. Nothing has come through yet. I'll um I'll stop you or interrupt you if something does come through. Thank you. Yeah. So just give me a second to set this up. Oops, we did get one question. Is there okay. a good age to start? It's you know, I may push that to Jessica or um, Rebecca to ask that. I mean, I can tell you what's in our label, but you know, with some severe acne um, scars that happen with younger um, folks, you know, in the rejuvenation process with the skin, this is going to work on most ages um, that you could list. But it's it really is replacing some of the collagen and elastin that you lose over time. So it's best suited. Um, you know, to start rebuilding that when you start to lose some. So that's a little bit of vague answer, but you know, how about um, Jasmine, do you, is Jessica, can you unmute and maybe put a little input what your average age is in, in your practice? Um, any age, um, especially for acne scarring, um, so younger people can um, start in their like early 20s. Great. Can you see my screen now? Yes, it looks good. Okay, good. Okay, I'm just trying to get to the presenter view. So just, it, this stuff tends to work a little bit slower on Zoom, but I'm, I'm working through it. <laughs> We're all in it together. <laughs> Life has changed a little bit. Okay. All right. Well, I may have to do it without the notes because I, my computer's not responding, but that's okay. So, you know, this video, the video went over this. This just gives you an idea what it is. And if you have never seen the device, it just gives you a picture. And I think a picture is always worth a thousand words. So, um, this is what the device looks like. It's very ergonomic. Um, the esthetician, nurse, doctor that is using this, um, it's, as you can see, a pretty simple device. Um, the only thing that's different about this and every other device on the market that you may have seen in different parts of the country or um, in other practices is this device was meant to be a microneedling device. It wasn't a makeup pen or a micropigmentation pen that was adapted. This is fully a microneedling pen and designed from the ground up. And that's why this is so effective. Um, this is really where a lot of intellectual property is that goes around skin pen. Um, what this really does is put all the moving parts into the cartridge that it gets thrown away after each patient. It's put into the sharps container. Um, why this is good for a patient and for the staff is they get a brand new calibrated perfect unit every time they go move to each patient. Um, so that's really just why I show you this picture. Um, just so you're, each patient you're, you're aware that you're getting a new device. A little bit about the science. This can get really in the weeds, but I'm going to 
I'm going to stay pretty high level with this. Um, essentially, microchannels are formed with um, the microneedles. And I think when you say the word needle, you might scare a portion of the population, but be, you know, if you've never had this procedure, understand they're going to use an anesthetic, um, typically like a BLT or something like that, where you shouldn't really feel this procedure being done. Um, just like if you had a skin cancer removed or something like that. They're gonna numb the area. You're not gonna feel the removal of that. Um, but this is a very minor little, um, tiny little needle that goes into the skin. And, and the real benefit of this is it's a super organic, no chemicals used. Your body can basically take this injury and then it can heal it without the need of anything other than what you have in your diet. That being said, it is very beneficial to ask your esthetician on post-procedure protocol and products to help where you're not getting those vitamins directly to your face. And you will, you will double the results with a microneedling procedure if you use a good post-care system. So make sure you ask those questions. And we can talk about that throughout too with Jessica and Rebecca's help. So a little bit of how this works. So just so you understand between a laser and some of the other ablative procedures, you don't have to get all into the words into this um, you know, slide, but you, know, you look at the pictures and what you're doing is a non-inflammatory healing pathway. So what that means is your body is not having to be altered enough where um, say with a laser or something more ablative, you might be producing a little micro scar to get a result. This has no scar produced with it. So your body can heal itself. And essentially when you go back and look at the dermal uh, matrix, you couldn't even tell anything was done other than it's gonna be thicker, healthier, and just a prettier looking um, slide that I hope no one's doing to themselves um, to check this. Um, this is uh, just showing the microneedle safety. Um, the iterations of old microneedling devices on the market. Now microneedling, if you can see the skin pen needle, it's just a totally different um, treatment. Um, it's not ablative at all. You're gonna have very, very strong stainless, medical grade stainless steel needles, and they're gonna go in and out. Believe it or not, you're getting 1600 microchannels per second. So even if you have your iPhone out and you break out a, a really slow-mo video, you still can't see the needles going up and down. It's actually kind of fun to do. Well, I mean, I find it fun, so that's, that's probably okay. The skin pen pre pre uh, precision system, clinically proven, just to give you an idea what some of the results look like. Um, this is a before and after. Um, this particular patient had six procedures. Um, and when you're dealing with pretty severe acne scarring, that tissue is held down in between um, the dermal layers and sometimes even deeper. And really what is happening is the microneedling is removing that tether <clears throat> to the lower skin levels and allowing new collagen to come into that area. And really how microneedling was uh, discovered was tattoo artists would be tattooing over scars and they would start to see, wow, these are really flattening out. Um, and interestingly enough, they started adding more needles to it and had a better result. But that's, that's basically how microneedling was, you know, discovered or invented. Um, so it's very, it's going to be very effective for acne scars and rejuvenating the skin like this patient um, right here. There's an answer right out of the, by the way, it says 22 years or older. That's a pretty standard um, FDA lingo. Um, you know, that's almost everything. I've sold implants to um, other devices on the market. Usually that's a pretty standard cutoff age for the FDA indication. So um, follow your prescriber's um, utilization um, of the device. Acne um, scars. We did get a question. Yeah, sure. Yeah. So this could either be for you or for one of the ladies. Um, that we were asked, does everyone need six treatments? No, nobody, not everyone needs six treatments. Um, sometimes I, I believe in the idea of under promising and over delivering. And some of the acne patients and some of the patients in general responded off two or three. You get the best genetic response off the first two, um, which is why you don't want to do 
um, 12 months in a row with microneedling, ideally. Some people's immune systems and bodies could hand that, handle that, but as you, you know, you do want to take intermittent breaks between uh, microneedling. So if you do six in a row, you might want to take a few months off just to let your body not get used to the response. If you just did seven, eight, nine in a row, um, the genetic response will be a little bit um, lower at that at that far out. So just take a break, um, but you can do six in a row. Three is ample for a lot of patients. Um, a lot of people buy a packages of six just because there, this is something that's going to be like skin fitness that you're going to keep up with. After you've got a great clinical response, you're then going to want to maintain that response. But definitely under promise, over deliver, lots of six patient um, packages are sold. And sometimes they do six in a row, but sometimes they do three and then take a few months off and do another three. Um, because that afterglow uh, just a few days out is real. And I'm going to actually explain that, what's happening in an upcoming slide. How often, another question, how often should you do for maintenance? That would, that would probably be more of like you looking in the mirror, but ideally what we respond with that is typically every year you're going to do a maintenance run. So after you've gone through your full cycle, um, yearly you're going to do that. But Jessica, Rebecca, what do you guys do? You're, some, you're one of the busiest accounts in the entire country. So I really want to kind of get your feedback on that. I don't know. I can tell that they're unmuting. It's probably, yeah, click it one more time. <laughs> um, typically when a patient does uh, between three to six treatments, um, it's nice to give the skin a break. And most people within another six months or the following year will do another three to six treatments. Great. And the other question was how far apart was it as well? They're about a month apart is was that a question or am I? Yes, four weeks. That would be a good question. Great. Perfect. So as you can see, um, this patient had tremendous results. Um, you know, I don't, I, I don't know the full up chart for this patient, but I would have been very pleased with this result. Um, it's a little bit more of an infl inflammatory acne patient. Um, so I like this slide because what it shows, you know, a patient is this product works. So if you're looking at the control, um, the first picture of the extracellular matrix here on the left, and then the one on the right that said skin pen plus the post procedure protocol, you can see that top layer of epidermis thickening while the lower structure is a lot more compact and healthy looking, um, which is really, really nice. And it's further, um, indicated on the far right picture, where it's just showing you that epidermis. Um, but we're definitely going into the dermis into this, which it, it goes stratum corneum, um, epidermis, dermis um, is the lower um, structure of the skin where a lot of fillers um, are indicated to go. Most fillers go deeper than the dermis, um, though, just because the needle alone is about a millimeter thick and your skin is only 1.5 to 2 millimeters thick. So most fillers are actually placed in the um, superficial sub-Q or, or um, even in the sub-Q. Um, it's really hard to go in the dermis. But so what that means is if they're doing another procedure as well, um, as far as fillers and that type of thing, it's very rare that you're going to have any um, problem with this. Usually you're going to be a couple weeks apart with these treatments, so everything should be fine and the clinician's going to have your paperwork to know um, how deep to go if they have to be a little bit more, you know, superficial or, or closer to the skin with the microneedling in a, a particular area, maybe around the orbicularis or the, the mouth muscle um, might be one of those areas. They'll know to do that, so um, th there should be no problem interacting within those layers for um, different procedures. But they just, this just um, shows you you're doubling the thickness. Go ahead. Yeah, we have another question, and I'll probably answer it just because um, Brian doesn't work in this office, so he may not know the answer. Um, but we were asked, what is a session? Is it one area or the entire face? And that's a great question. So for um, at Lux, a session would be, yes, the entire face. 
Now we can add on areas. The neck is a very popular area to add on for us, um, and some people may add on the decollete. Um, so that's something you would do, you know, discuss with your um, esthetician to whether that would be a good add-on or not. But yes, one set, when we say session, we mean the entire face. Perfect. Any other questions? Stop us at any time. So I show this slide because I think everyone needs to understand if you've ever gone into surgery and had something, maybe a knee or a hip or uh, something operated on, the surgeon's going to tell you, you know, your tissue is going to take typically about 365 days to really fully heal. Now, most of it's done in that six to eight weeks, but this just shows you when your skin starts to reform, re, um, you know, start the process of neocollagenesis or new collagen. And that's as early as, you know, three to five days, but it continues out up to about 300 to 65 days, um, a full year. So the nice thing about that, and also to go back on why we take a break in between, is you're gonna be remodeling your skin. It's gonna look better and better as time goes on. So just because you stopped it, say you did one at baseline, then you did it, came back in a month. So you're back, you really um, had two treatments within a month. And then your third treatment is two months in, you're gonna be growing and those results are gonna be getting better and better. You may not have that initial glow right away, um, last forever. Um, but you can, uh, you know, you can always, that's usually a phase, uh, kind of a, a view um, that people are seeing of your tissue really starting to realign itself and, um, and really growing from the inside out. And I think that's what produces a large portion of that glow. But you're going to have um, your tissue remodel and look better and better and better over that year. So it doesn't stop at the end of the treatment. So this slide, I really just, it's a lot of stuff. I hesitated doing this, but really what I wanted to focus on is the stuff on the left. If you look at untreated controlled, um, the control untreated skin, and then you do three procedures with a good post procedure, you can get about 433% more collagen and elastin deposition. So that's really important. So just follow what your esthetician um, or nurses say um, to, to get a maximized result. There's just a few things you need. You need magnesium, zinc, copper peptides um, are essential. Um, a lot of this stuff you get in your diet, but it doesn't go right to your face. So just make sure you focus on the post-procedure protocol as well, not just showing up for the treatment. And be compliant. Um, doctors are typically the worst patients, but um, so you guys got to one up on those, those guys, but try to just use this stuff. It's Think of it as going to the the gym every day. I don't go do arms and think I'm Arnold Schwarzenegger. I'd have to, I'll never be Arnold Schwarzenegger, but I will, uh, you know, continually to just do workouts day in and day out to get that consistent result. Things to avoid, um, just post-treatment, really avoid everything. <laughs> so at least for the first 12 hours, um, you want to make sure that you don't have um, any of your over-the-counter treatments. This is stuff I'll leave to um, the clinicians, but just really stay away from anything. Any There's been 0.0% adverse events in over 1.2 million treatments, and we'd love to keep it that way. And the best way is just don't use anything while your, your microchannels are open, which I'm going to hit on in a slide up here. That's this. Um, so this will show you all of um, intact skin is the top left. That's when you do, right before you do the treatment, right after you did the treatment um, at zero hours, there's a bunch of microchannels that are open, but you can see steadily as these little green dots go away um, in this slide at eight and 10 hours, you're really, most of the stuff is closed. So if you had this in the morning, really going out in the evening and um, doing, getting back to business, or at least maybe not with makeup on, but you certainly about eight to 10 hours in, you should look fairly normal. The redness is going to subside and most of your microchannels are going to be um, closed. 
I'm assuming you're probably like Tennessee. I'm, I'm calling from Tennessee. Um, most of our stuff is really not all that well open at this point. It's about 50%. So um, you're probably dealing with something similar. We did have a question. Um, they said, when can I wear makeup again after treatment? And what does the typical downtime look like? Um, although you might be about to kind of answer that. Yeah. Um, Jessica, do you want to do you want to take that? We typically say at least 12 hours. Um, there's a little bit longer um, with some patients. If you're immunocompromised, I definitely recommend um, taking a little bit longer. Um, Jessica, what do you recommend for your patients? Um, I usually recommend 24 hours after. Perfect. Perfect. Um, and we always tell you guys the safer, longer, you know, term stuff. Because if you saw that slide at 24 hours, we know all those microchannels are closed. Um, but we know some people are going to break that, but really try to hold tight with that because it's, it's really important um, that nothing is on the skin and we don't want anything getting in a layer of the skin that it's really not intended to. If you're using Restylane or Juvederm or one of these fillers that are sterile hyaluronic acid, they're sterilized, they're meant to go into the skin, but there's not a lot of over-the-counter stuff you have on your bathroom counter that is meant to be inside of the skin. So we try to keep that out for at least 24 hours. Thanks for that, Jessica. So this will show you before one hour treatment. Um, that second photograph, you know, you typically look very consistent erythema or redness. And then you can see even at four hours, you're starting to return to normal. 24 hours, definitely gonna be back to normal. If you've never done this procedure, you might exhibit a little bit of micro peeling. That's just your tissue uh, realigning, it's growing, and um, that's just, it's, it's, it's just turning over skin. That's all that's happening. Um, but, you know, as long as you keep, um, you know, out of the sun, out of any irritants, don't put anything on your face, about four to eight hours after, you're looking pretty normal. And we've kind of gone over this. It, this, it's a natural alternative to most things on the market. Skin pen triggers the body's natural wound healing cascade to achieve dynamic results um, any month of the year. And what that means is sometimes there's products that are not recommended in the heat um, that Jessica could probably name a lot of, but you know this product can be used any time of the year. So there's really no off time for microneedling. Um, any skin type. So, um, you know, whether you're the, the, the whitest person on the, on the planet or the darkest person on the planet, um, we indicate that in the medical profession as Fitzpatrick one through six, any skin type is okay for uh, microneedling. Um, some some heat-based um, stuff is not recommended for um, certain skin types. So, um, but the, you know, obviously they're gonna guide you to everything that's safe and effective for your skin type. Um, but this can be used on any, and it was studied on all um, skin types in the, um, in our initial FDA clearance study. One standard that most physicians won't bring a product in is it's got to have 80 or 90 percent of clinical um, subjects recommending the product. This definitely is one of those products. So, um, you know, that's why we do a lot of advertising with word of mouth, but um, it's, it's, it's really a, uh, a nice thing to have such a well-engineered device plus people really wanting to do this. And I think it's ma mainly um, stems from the cost of procedure is fairly inexpensive um, and the product works on everybody. And I'm gonna stop the share. Maybe we can go live and you guys can see me again. Does anybody have any uh, questions on any of the material that we went over? And I'm okay pausing. So um, I know that was a lot of information in a fairly short period of time. Jessica or Rebecca or any other of the Lux ladies that are on, do you guys have anything that you wanted to add in regards to the microneedling or the patients that, that do it, et cetera? So 
someone says, um, so if I have a small brown spot on my face, will this help? I have fair skin. And then you, we might have covered this, but any precautions for those who bruise easily? Good question. I'm going to defer to um, Jessica on that just because I can read off my patient for you stuff, but it's kind of boring language. Um, the, the bruising, um, you know, typically um, you probably have a protocol for bruising at the office. So Jessica, do you mind helping with that? There's a number of vitamins and stuff like that you might. Um, usually for bruising, we adjust the dial. So um, not, not as strong typically. Which is a good point. If somebody has in, you know, an event coming up, they're going to, they're going to tailor make this, you know, treatment for whatever you have. If you're, if you want to be more aggressive and you've got a really bad scarring that you're, you're trying to, you know, get to subside or reduce, um, they're going to tell you if we're going to really go after this, we're going to have to probably go a little bit deeper with some of the uh, treatments and you might have a little bit more downtime. Um, but even that, that's typically two to three days max. And it's usually after you're able to put makeup on, um, even with an aggressive treatment, you should be fine and able to resume daily activities. You just really want to not go work out um, and I guess that's, you know, outside or in the humidity excess, um, you really want to stay away from doing any physical exercise for 24 to 48 hours, which may sound like a lot. And that's sometimes the hardest thing for me doing my own treatment is working out on like a hot yoga class or something like that. But, you know, you just need to be, be able to put this in where you won't have a lot of uh, fluid coming out of the skin. Um, and that's just probably nothing would happen, but we're, we weren't, we're going to go on safe, um, rather safe than sorry mentality. Um, and then the, so yes, you're welcome for answering the question about the bruising. Someone asked, maybe Rebecca or Jessica, um, if you guys can answer this one. Um, she says, I have a small brown spot on my, I have small brown spots on my face. Will this help? I have fair skin. Um, and then someone else said, and this is a good one for Rebecca and Jessica, since if you guys are going to unmute. I'm thinking this is for fine lines and wrinkles, but hearing a lot about scarring. It's for both, right? Um, so, you know, Brian can talk about on-label usage. Um, we can talk about kind of whatever we want since um, we're the, you know, we're, um, um, we're supervised by a plastic surgeon and a dermatologist. Um, but Rebecca, Jessica, can you guys answer those two questions? Okay, it's actually Rebecca. We could unmute myself. Um, Hi. Brown spot, um, yes, it does work um, to lighten up pigment. It's not really the best treatment if you came in for that, um, but it does help lighten up pigment. And what was the second What question? is the best treatment for pigment? Um, typically, we would do laser for that. There's other things, you know, peels, but um, microneedling, I always explain to patients, it definitely helps with pigment, but that's really not what it's indicated for. And the other question was fine lines and wrinkles. Yes, it's great for that. Um, definitely, because it's just going to stimulate the collagen. Um, skin pen is, and I don't know if I'm allowed to say this, but I, I can. Um, skin pen is, I think, in the middle of doing a study um, for the fine lines and wrinkles to get that FDA specific approval. Um, thinking about a lot of the stuff that we do in the office, a lot of what we do is off-label as far as what it's FDA um, like cleared for. Um, but use the same kind of um, technology and everything that he showed us in the slides of why it strengthens the skin for the scarring. It's doing the same thing for the fine lines and wrinkles um, as far as stimulating, like Rebecca said, stimulating the collagen and... Um, so to answer your question, yes, it is for both. And I think I have a, um, a virtual background. I can kind of show what it's doing. Um, so let me see if I can stand to one side or the other. Um, if you can see in the background, it's really weird going backwards because <laughs> I'm mirrored in the video. So I'm, I'm having a when you look at a fine line wrinkle, this cross section here, 
um, what fillers are great at is lifting that wrinkle up. Um, I don't sell fillers, but I've launched most of them on the planet, so I'm very familiar with how they work. What microneedling as a, as a mechanism of action is doing is it's going to make all of that filler stuff or neurotoxins essentially look better from the standpoint of it's going after the skin. And if there's an acne scar or some deficit in the skin there, it's going to be fixing that. And that's, that's the benefit of microneedling. It's, it's restructuring that skin and giving that dermal thickness as well as epidermal thickness. Epidermal thickness is really important with the skin nutrition. And um, hopefully that picture just gives you a little bit of background um, or a little better view of like a skin deficit or, or a wrinkle. Because when you have that wrinkle and it's, it's animating over and over, whether it's a nasolabial fold or what have you, um, the only way to rebuild that underneath it is to do a collagen induction therapy um, and work on the skin structure. A filler is just going to go in, and I love them to death, but it's going to go in and fix it. But as it is eroded away, unless it's more of a permanent filter, it won't fix the underlying structure. So that, um, that in this particular picture is a line, but that could be easily a acne scar. And the acne scar is a little bit different because under that line, there is a piece of skin that's tethering it down um, into deep layers. And what the, the collagen induction therapy or the microneedling is doing is detethering that and cutting that right off and letting that skin animation go back up to normal or a little bit of a flatter look. Great. Somebody asked, they said you, oh no, where'd it go? I've lost some of my questions. Um, she said, you said you numb the patients, but what does the treatment feel like? <laughs> <laughs> well, um, that's different per patient, but numbing should be effective enough where you're, you're, you, you, you should never be at a lot more than a probably two to three of pain out of 10. Um, and most of the time I would say it's zero to one. And I know with how many microneedling you all do, you must have very effective numbing medication. We do. We get it from a local compounding pharmacy. And um, I mean, from my experience being treated by the estheticians, it's, you feel the vibration, but you don't feel the needles. I was kind of, people typically say it feels like a Sonicare toothbrush over your, your face or something like that. You're pretty numb. Yeah. Yep. Good stuff. Do, so, do we have any other questions? People can message me. These are all really great questions. Um, if not, um, I was going to wrap up this talk and just make sure everybody knows what are the rest of our 30 days. Um, virtual fall open house looks like and announce our um, our winner of the free treatment. Um, oh, you're so welcome. Someone said, thank you so much. This was great. And someone did ask on Facebook, and I think we've answered it. She asked if it was good for scarring, um, but she asked that about the time that Rebecca was talking about the differences. Um, of the fine lines and wrinkles and scarring. So I'm pretty sure we got her question answered. Um, so yes, do we have pricing specials? Um, we do have the, the special, or it is on special right now. This week, so August 31st through September 6th, you can purchase um, this special online or by calling or you can do it in office. Um, our um, pricing is normally $350 per treatment. Right now it's 20% off. Um, so that brings it to, I should have my sheet, sheet in front of me, that brings it to $280 per treatment. Um, the package of six, not only is it because you get great results, but we also, with a package of six, we give you one for free. So it's basically buy five, get one free. So that price right now normally is $1750. We'll take 20% off of that this week and a package of six would come to $1,400, which is the, basically the best price that we all give. Um, Brian, I'm going to 
maybe share my screen real fast so I can show them the 30 days of luxury um, schedule here. Um, and you guys Let's should feel see. really good about that because if you go to Park Avenue in New York, it's actually 1640 for one treatment. So I feel Holy like moly. Hilton Head people are getting a pretty good deal. <laughs> so it's wow. a good to be a Southerner, I think, uh, when, when we're getting microneedling. Yeah. So I'm not sure which screen you see here. Uh, if you see my only my screen that has the event or if you see the next slide, um, I didn't practice this. Um, but so this week, 10% um, off of Radius filler, 20% off Lumen Skin Care, 20% off Elsa MD sunscreens, 20% off the Skin Pen Microneedling, and 20% off Neocutis um, Skin Care products. So we're showing you this in advance so you can plan on what you need to schedule for, what you want to take advantage of. Um, again, you can take advantage of these um, um, online, by phone, and in office. And anything that you prepay for, um, you have on your account for up to one year. Um, and our winner is, congrats, Kelly Boniki. I'm sorry if I say your name wrong. Um, call me at 843-781-6672 to schedule your free microneedling treatment. So congrats to you. All right. That's fun. All right. Yay, and she looks like she raised her hand, probably in the, <laughs> you're welcome. That's you. This is how we shake no, hands says, in the new world. You're welcome. Thank you for joining our event. And we'll have events almost every day this month. So if people can come to those um, for more chances to win, go to our Facebook page to find the event. Um, we also send emails out every Monday with the links to register and um, and yeah, so people can have other chances to win. All right, well, if nobody has any additional questions, we're going to go ahead and say goodbye. And thank you so much for joining us. We um, look forward to seeing everyone in the office soon. Thank you, everybody. Bye.